President Kiir will go down in history as a man who populated his government with failed leaders. Additionally, history will remember President Kiir as a man who hated bright minds. Hello, welcome to the GTV South Sudan Global. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe as we will continue to bring you informative videos. When you look at the SPLMIG, you will come to terms with the scarcity of brains. President Kiir's government is a government of incompetent and mentally deficient leaders as they say birds of the same feather flock together to serve in president Kiir's government you must have two qualifications i.e beauty or looks and a propensity to loot no wonder president Kiir's government is the most slay queenish government in africa in this analysis we have the top six unqualified government officials in the south sudan government here are they number one Awu Denga Shuil. honorable Awu Denga Shuil is the minister of general education and instructions. Both primary and secondary education fall under a docket. Honorable Awood hails from Werab State, the home state of President Kiir. Many South Sudanese are asking themselves, how can someone with no academic records head such a critical ministry tasked with nurturing the future generation of South Sudanese? Sources in their camp told this media house that Honorable Awood no longer concentrates on her duties. Instead, she's busy arresting young professionals from her Tony's constituency. The documents in our possession allegedly show Honorable Wood is an instigator of or communal violence, conflict between the Arakog Denga Chuil community and Luanjiang community. Sources indicated that Honorable Awood's hatred of the Luanjiang community is infinite. In 2021, Honorable Awood denied Class 80 students in Luanjiang the right to write national examinations under the pretext of insecurity. And when the young professionals from Luanjiang expressed their displeasure, Honorable Awood took it personally, and since then, she had been hunting them like wild animals, throwing them in jail jails or disappearing them. For someone who used her beauty to get into government, absconding duties and bullying young professionals are the scorecards. Honorable Awood should be thankful to the South Sudanese because they allowed her to aid a critical ministry without qualifications. We challenge Honorable Awood to avail herself of her academic certificates. Also, Honorable Awood should understand that power is temporary. Soon, the government of slay queens, merchants of corruption and bonfires and killers will be gone. When that happens, Honorable Awood's beauty will save her from possible prosecution. Treat carefully our beautiful minister, Honorable Awood, because everything under the sun is vanity. Number two, Nunu Kumba. Honorable Nunu Kumba is the current speaker of the Transitional National Assembly. Honorable Nunu is another person serving in our government because of her beauty. In 2010, when she ran as the gubernatorial candidate of Western Equatoria State against the greatest son of Equatoria, Joseph Bangasi Bakasoro, she lost massively. President Kiir gave her a political lifeline. President Kiir appointed her to many posts, including her current position as Speaker of the National Assembly. Honorable Nunu will go down in history as a rabbi's dummy speaker. She callously surrendered the National Assembly to President Kiir. She's a total failure. Even now, the National Assembly is still in slumber, with no tangible laws being passed. Honorable Nunu waits for instructions from President Kiir. She has no brain of her own. Oh, no wonder the South Sudanese are going through hell because the House of Representatives is managed by a leader who is more interested in spending a lot of time in cosmetic shop. We urge Honorable Lulu to understand that beauty fits, but deeds remain forever. Number three, Tutkeo Galwak Manime. Tutkeo Galwak Manime is the presidential advisor on security affairs. Let it be remembered that Tutkeo is the adopted son of former Sudan's dictator Omar al Bashir. Tutkeo spent his whole life by against the South Sudanese. In the aftermath of the independence, President Kiir betrayed the South Sudanese by co-opting into his government the likes of Tutkel while pushing away patriots such as Pagana Moon, Oyai Dengaja, Nyal Deng Nyal, and many others. Tutkel does not have any qualifications except for his reddish gum and gigantic tummy. Tutkel is one of the South Sudan economic hitmen. This media house is aware of Tutkel controlling the entire oil sector at the BS of President Kiir. On security matters, Tutkel has failed miserably. On looting, Tutkel has succeeded. President Kiir, out of sinister motives, prefers failures over bright and competent South Sudanese. Hopefully, the South Sudanese will overcome their indecision and throw out President Kiir and his mindless oligarchs. Number 4. 
General Santino Denguol. General Santino Denguol is the Chief of Defense Forces, CDF of the SSPDF. General Deng is President Case in law. Currently, the SSPDF rank and file are suffering a law. It's fine that General Denguol can't stand up for the welfare. General Deng will blatantly allow the siphoning of resources meant for the SSPDA paramilitary NSS, National Security Service, and the elite Tiger Division that personally guards President Kiel. Under General Deng Wool, the SSPDA is so impoverished, most SSPDA rank and file are starving and have even resorted to charcoal sales to make ends meet. Even the wounded heroes are not spared. General Deng Wool does not care about the well-being of the SSPDA. He only cares about protecting the illegitimate throne of President Kiel. Number 5. General Akol Korkuch. This is a no-brainer. General Akol Korkuch is the Director General of the National Security Service NSS. General Akol's appetite for control and enslavement of South Sudanese cannot be ignored. The fear of General Akol Kor has reached a boiling point. General Akol Kor is a man who will even arrest a dog if it is accused of forcing a government. General Akol Kor is the central neighbor system, the corrupt system that runs South Sudan. Every company in South Sudan, public and private, as General Akol Kuo's people, directors of state corporations like Nile Fed are appointed because of General Akol Kuo's recommendation. The Minister of Finance, Governor of the Central Bank, and state governors are appointed as a result of General Akol Kuo's recommendation. General Akol Kuo, in collaboration with General Deng Wool, has with the SSPDF deliberate. General Akol Kuo wants a replica of the Sudan Paramilitary Rapid Support Forces, RSF. Similar to Omar al-Bashir, who empowered the RSF, President Kiel is clueless empowering the NSS. Sooner than later, chickens will come home to roost. Unless President Kiel does the needful, relieving notorious General Akol Kor, he will come to regret it. Number 6. Benjamin Bolmel. Benjamin Bolmel is a presidential advisor on special programs. He is also a high-ranking officer of the National Security Service, NSS, and a member of the SPLM Political Bureau. Bolmel is another South Sudan economic hitman. Bolmel, like Tutkel, controls the oil sector as well. Bolmel is a working dictionary of corruption. His road construction company, Huck, has received billions of dollars for road construction across South Sudan. Up to now, South Sudan does not have roads because Bolmel has siphoned our hard earned oil revenues out of the country. The goal of Bolmel in the government is not to save his country but to make money. Of course, Bolmel is one of those who protect President Key's wallet of ill gotten wealth. As we have aforementioned, to serve in President Key's government, you might be either a slave queen like Honorable Awood Nunukumba at L or a looter like Turkel General Kolkor at L. Benjamin Bolmel's corruption magnitude is staggering, although he calls himself a doctorate degree holder. Nobody under heaven has ever seen Bolmel's academic record. For those who don't know, Bolmel is one of those who have been sanctioned by the US government due to gross corruption in the South Sudan government. Thus, we can attest that Bolmel is indeed a doctorate degree holder in corruption, all considered. These are some of the unqualified government officials in the South Sudan government. There are others as well. What do you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Please don't forget to subscribe to the GTV South Sudan Global.